Good morning, YouTube. We are back with you from Texas to OMGs. Today we celebrate the ninth birthday of my daughter, Ty Lynn. It is Halloween themed, so I will let you guys uh, in on how we prepare uh, for this massive party we're getting ready to have with all our family members and friends. So I will be taking you guys on uh, on a ride today doing a lot of different events. So. Uh, please join me in uh, a celebration of my daughter. Happy birthday, Thailand. We love you. So the first thing we have to do this morning for this party is meat preparation. I have uh, 20 pounds of pork and I also have 30 pounds of chicken that I'm getting ready to marinate. So I'll take you guys through step by step on what I do to make uh, my meat as delicious as can be. So, so let me get what I put in my sauce. Alright. As far as my pork. So it doesn't take much. I only use a few different seasonings. In here I have salt, pepper, garlic powder, and MSG. Um, this is a little bit of soy sauce. And I have uh, some sugar to make it give it sweet. And then this is uh, oyster sauce. And I'm missing one more ingredient, hoisin sauce. It's like the Asian version of barbecue. So I'll grab that and then it will be ready to rock and roll. First bottle. So the next thing we're doing is we are going to start seasoning the chicken for today because not everybody eats pork. So we'll go ahead and get started with that. Right. So we washed our hands, rinsed the chicken, seasoned the pork tenderloin, and now I'm taking you on what we do for just the chicken. It's actually very simple. What I found throughout cooking and barbecuing and grilling out from others it's not what you put in it but it's really what you leave out of it so at first when I started cooking I was putting way too much things in it and I just didn't have an identity on how the chicken tastes um, but through overall taste testing of family members and friends and getting different recipes uh, I've created a, uh, my own which is actually really good so um, it pretty much consists of the same seasonings as the pork tenderloin I did earlier. However, the only thing it does not involve is the sugar and then the hoisin sauce. So I'll remove that and I'll start with the oyster sauce. This is the big, big flavoring agent of why it actually tastes so good. So here's the 30 pounds of chicken that I got and have just enough. I have um, cases of oyster sauce and hoisin sauce both in this household because of the fact that we uh, barbecue so much so here we go and here's the soy sauce that looks good um, once again house seasoning a lot of it I make a lot of it at a time um, just because we're always cooking so and I'll keep it on deck too I carry one of these on deck at home and then we mix once again sturdy so this time we have actually boneless thighs and drums um, which makes it a little bit easier for a party when I'm cooking 
Um, so I don't have to uh, worry about um, white meat, dark meat. I like preferably um, the dark meat so that it's a little bit juicier. Um, even though it does contain more fat and I cook with charcoal, uh, I find that it's a lot better as far as um, tenderness and also not being as dry as like a wing or, or a breast. And plus, it's perfect. Like chicken, when you walk, run around with it, kids, uh, the, the ease of hand, uh, handling the chicken uh, drum is actually pretty cool. So I find that kids uh, like it because it's a big hit for them. So they got to handle uh, their food. So this will marinate for almost the same amount of time as the other uh, batch of meat that I have. Um, today we're also doing nachos, sticky rice, some papaya salad, um, Lao papaya salads, pretty good. Um, we have chili on deck as well, along with um, a few other things. So, uh, but yeah, we have a pretty busy day today. So I'm glad that you're able to. to Next up is the nachos that we're going to be doing. So I like using ground turkey. My family, um, they like it. So we've been using ground turkey for our substitute versus using ground beef. A lot healthier, not as much fat content, but I like using the turkey part of it. So uh, we'll go ahead and start frying that up, get ready for the batch of nachos that we're going to be doing. All right, in goes the ground turkey. Here goes the ground turkey. It'll be frying in here for a little while. But the ingredients are pretty simple for nachos, nacho cheese, jalapenos, and a little bit of salsa. Once that goes in, then we are good to go. We'll show you the finished results later. Cheese sauce goes in, a whole whopping canister of it. This says that it's six pounds and ten ounces. So we are getting this in. But who doesn't love nacho cheese? I love it. My lovely assistant which is also known as my wife of 10 years this year. Ooh. YouTube, you guys will find that I dearly, dearly love my wife. She's the best thing that ever happened to me. She's the reason why I'm so happy in my life. But I'm also the reason why She says that she goes crazy. So, weird. So I was just recently joined um, in my nacho making today by uh, four beautiful little ladies. We had a sleepover yesterday for Thailand and her birthday party. This is the lovely Thailand. Mm. As you can see, somebody did not wrap their hair uh, while they went to sleep, but she still looks ever so lovely. Uh, and then here's her friends, Tessa, her sister, Channing, and Peyton. So nice little sleepover yesterday. And they are, what are you guys doing? Doing here now? Um, Yeah, we were doing here and then we were no, cleaning up the basement for a little bit. Yeah. Because we thought we were, you were gonna go down in the basement. Yeah, so uh, they have been down there terrorizing the house. This is what we deal with on a weekly basis, uh, sleepovers. I have four daughters, so oh, yeah. I mean, there's a ton of little ladies running around all the time doing hair, makeup, fingernails. Stuff. So my house is very glittery. Without further ado, let's do this video. Alright. So we are almost done. The only thing that we need to do is add our salsa. Good night. And stir up. And then after that, we are done. So I like putting salsa in here. For some reason, it makes it taste a lot better. Some people don't. I know they just put the cheese in the meat. I'm not a fan of that. So All right, so now if you have a special way of making nachos and you want to leave your comments behind, please. Uh, we are always looking forward to trying new things, um, new recipes. My wife is a fan of nachos, so I know that she would appreciate it as well. But if you want to go ahead and leave it in the comments section, we'll go ahead and give it a shot. 
So yeah, stirring six pounds of cheese is you know pretty tough. You gotta make sure that everything is all incorporated into the gooey. But um, the key is not to put too much salsa in there because it will overpower the nacho cheese. So I, I put just a little sample. I'll keep the salsa for um, chips later, but we bought a few bags of chips, so we'll have enough nacho chips and nacho cheese for, for everyone. But other than that, this will be done in about an hour. Right now, we're gonna actually cook the sticky rice. Um, it's a big staple in the Southeast Asian culture. If you've ever had it before, you know how good it is. It goes with everything. We eat it. It's like the American version of bread. Uh, we eat sticky rice with eggs or beef jerky, uh, chicken, rice, ribs, whatever, whatever uh, that you can eat it with, with any type of meat or vegetable, that's what we do. So the first thing to do is you got to have the right kind of rice. You can't just soak any rice. It's rice that you buy from your typical um, <clears throat> Asian markets and it's got to soak, minimum soak of, of three to four hours. Uh, you can do this um, uh, with a quick soak, uh, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I know that I had a big party, so I started soaking this overnight when I got home um, yesterday after my uh, late night out uh, poker party with my uh, buddies. So, um, but it's been soaking now for just about uh, nine hours, and that's that's good enough. Uh, because of the basket, my rice cooker, I'm limited on the size that I can make, so I have to cook my sticky rice in batches. Um, but it'll be ready to go um, uh, by four o'clock today. So the first things first is I gotta fill this container up with water. The key is not to fill it up with too much. If you fill it up with too much, uh, what happens is the rice touches the bottom of the water and the rice doesn't cook, it actually boils. You don't want that. You need the steam from this in order to cook and make your sticky rice sticky. So while that's actually getting ready up to, uh, to be put to a boil, the next thing that we need to do is actually rinse the rice. So um, this is the actual steamer, the rice basket itself. Uh, what we'll go ahead and do is we'll scoop out some of the rice that's in here. Like I said, I have to make batches. But what we'll go ahead and do is fill this up as much as we possibly can, rinse it, and then apply it to our steamer. And then that's how you get sticky rice. And in about 20 to 25 minutes, uh, it will be put in this container. This in uh, the Lao community is called a dip kaut. Uh, it, it, it's made out of bamboo and what it does is it keeps, it insulates uh, the sticky rice to keep it warm um, all day. It's not supposed to keep it hot, obviously it has, it's very porous, but it's, it's a great container because it doesn't really stick and it keeps your, um, uh, your, your sticky rice warm. Now, every Lao household, this is a staple, dip kaut. So it just has a container where the rice basket sits on top of and goes down. So there is our dip cup. So let's get to the rinsing. Here's my quick rinse. Um, what this also does is gets the, the steamer um, a little wet so that the rice doesn't stick to it. So always rinse your rice, always. The next thing you can do after the rice is rinsed is place it on your steamer as it gets hot and let it sit. Now I like to cook the rice so that for the first 20 minutes it's actually um, covered. So I'll put a lid on this and then for the last five or 10 minutes I'll uncover it, um, flip it over so that I can get to the other side as well. So, so every Lao household as well, uh, universal uh, lid that I don't have a pot to match but for some reason I have the lid. Uh, we use this lid for everything. <laughs> so I use it for my steamer. Um, notice that it's I do have it cooking on high. So when your rice is cooking and it's steaming, 
I typically turn it down because you don't need it to be on high in order to keep that consistency of temperature steaming your rice. So once I see the steam coming out, I'll drop the, uh, the stove down to about medium so that it will continue to steam. But I don't need to have it cook on high. I don't want the water to burn out. You don't want that either because you'll end up buying a new steamer itself. Um, so I've had that happen to me one time. Please do not let the water burn out on your steamer and forget about your rice. So uh, in about 20 to 25 minutes, I'll see you guys back here. All right, so as you can see that the pot is actually steaming now. I'm gonna turn this down to medium so it continues to steam um, and then cook the rice. But uh, like I said, we'll be checking back in in about another 15, 20 minutes and it should be good to go. All right. So I know this day has just begun and I've done a lot already. It's only 9.37 in the, in the morning. I, I still have to run to the store to pick up my uh, supplies to make my papaya salad. I also have to get uh, s'mores stuff as well for the kids. So I'm not even, yeah, it's gonna be a long one. So I'm on my way currently to Saigon grocery store which is owned by uh, a buddy of mine and his family uh, I actually play soccer with him so he's a really good guy to pick up supplies to make um, the stomach home papaya salad um, I'm gonna put some shrimp in there because I like dried shrimp grab some limes and tomatoes as well and see if there's anything else that we can get so we'll be heading there shortly so we're here at the Saigon Oriental grocery market on Calhoun right here at uh, locally Fort Wayne, Indiana. So we'll be picking up our supplies. Look at the me. Yeah, what's up, man? How you doing? Yeah, we got some supplies. All these fresh vegetables and things like that. Typically the things you'll find in a, an Asian market. So, we are here for the papaya, which is right here. Gotta get a good firm one. So, actually, we're gonna get a couple of them. That'll do. limes and now we are getting carrots this goes great with papaya salad nice little contrast and texture also great because it's very crunchy so while I was gone uh, I got done running around to the stores and I went and cut the grass and I did a few different things uh, well, uh, over these last few hours, but I did shred the, the papaya and also the carrots. Now, some of you guys may think that this is not papaya. However, we eat it really, really raw because of the texture and what we put into our salad. Um, I got the nachos done, so they're ready to go. I got some shrimp over there uh, from the, my good buddy of mine, Lee, over there at Saigon Grocery Store. Um, some peppers that we picked out of our pepper plant. Um, we fried some of the beef jerky, so that is ready to go for our guests and then also once again the sticky rice is done as you can see my kid is over there eating some of the stick uh the beef jerky already um but we are good to go as far as preparation now i did already finish the pork chops got that done already now i'm heading back outside to go ahead and finish up also the um the chicken so stay tuned all right so I got done with my batch of uh, pork chops and now I'm ready to throw in the chicken that's here. But I think it's a little too hot still, so I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit. But as you can see, uh, you know what? I think we are, should be fine. Well, you know what? You're right. Man. So this is what we got going on here. It's the chicken that's on. 
Uh, typically my rule of thumb is if it's thicker than the, your hand, thicker than your hand, you're gonna cook it with the lid down. So here we go. And I'll check on these occasionally. Um, let's go ahead and open this up and give it a little bit of air. It's about 15 minutes before 2 o'clock, and so we got about two hours before the party starts. I got about 30 pounds of chicken that I still have to cook, so I'm pretty much done with everything that I need to do as far as prep, but there's still some things that I need to finalize. Got getting the papaya salad situated, um, cooking the rest of the meat that's here. Um, I got done cutting a few branches down from my tree that has fallen, so we're going to use that as firewood for the s'mores uh, later on today. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been a it's been a rough one for me today, but we still got an entire party to go through, and I hope you guys enjoy. So all the pork's done, and all the chicken uh, drums are done. Now we're do the boneless chicken thighs that are sitting here, marinating in my good marinating juices. Uh, so I'll give you kind of a glance of what it looks like here. Right there, look. And that, guys, is money. Money, 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 money. Yeah, I couldn't ask for a more beautiful day out here. Uh, October 29th, Saturday here in uh, Indiana. So it's beautiful. Other than the wind, it's relatively warm, 73 degrees. So we're gonna definitely enjoy. We got about an hour to count down until the people start getting here. And my mom is coming all the way down. She's uh, down here from Chicago, so we're gonna be enjoying the festivities. And so earlier we uh, chopped up some branches that fell down on our property and uh, the best way to get rid of it is to burn it. So along with our boxes, we'll be doing that too. So uh, that's gonna be our s'mores. Uh, and then also we're stocking up from uh, more wood over there from, uh, uh, from our local temple. And I got my niece. Raviana helping me. Everybody's lending a helping hand. That's what we do around here. We're a community. So say hi, Ray. Hi. <laughs> so earlier I was telling you how the tool that I was using uh, makes it easier um, to shred the papaya. Well, my mom has came in from Chicago, Illinois, and she's going to show us how uh, the old schools do it, mm -hmm. um, which she's uh, slicing individually, as you can see, yeah. into the papaya, scoring it. And then once she does that, she's gonna slice into it um, and then shred it that way. Me, I'm a more efficient guy. I use the no, other I tool mean, that's use it. So uh, that's why I'm gonna do it. So say hi, mom. Hello. Hi, YouTube. Hi. That's my mother, YouTube. Woman now. All the way back to there's more of the scoring and if you watch she's going to slice it so that it shreds it so yeah. pretty old school that's how they do it back at home in Laos mm -hmm. but however there has been tools that have been invented to make this a lot easier which she refuses to use mm -hmm. uh, because she's just old school I mean anybody this, else like pa this? else's parents are like that like this, she's this very way. reluctant to change yeah. Tastes better like this. So I'm officially done. If you notice right there, just an FYI for my people who follow me and are in a, my fantasy league, I am the 2015 fantasy football champion. Anyways, I'm officially done. I've got done grilling. Um, it's been a long day. Uh, we have people that's here, so I'm about to show you a little bit of the craziness that's going on right now. So uh, if you bear with me, just turn around and make it happen. Here's some of the family members and friends. And we got people over here making papaya salad, like I mentioned earlier. As you can see, this is what we do. She's using what's called a coke and sock in order to break up the papaya, squeeze in some fresh juices. And then we didn't tell her about the bugs until after she was done. And there's also additional people out here. So I am done cooking. This is my daughter, Brooklyn Kai. Hi. Take the broom. We got people over there. Kids are running around. And I'm officially done. And a little 
Look at the cute little baby. More presents. It's actually the birthday kid right there, dressed up as a hamburger. Yeah, I mean, I mean, awesome. Say hello. Hi. I know I look delayed, but I'm here. Hello. 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 Say hi. Hi. Such a cutie pie. She's cute. And she actually only likes me. She doesn't like my wife. Just joking. We'll show this to her later when she grows up. So let's go down and go check out the craziness. Jesus. So as we walk past the area, look at all this. Oh my goodness. So you got kids pretty much all over the place. How you guys doing? Say hi. Say hi. So yeah, so we are doing science experiments as the kids love to do it with their gifts that Thailand got. So yeah, it's absolutely crazy. So, this is the second, third part of the birthday party where we're having s'mores for everybody at the bonfire on a uh, October night in Indiana. Roger Stitch, Roger Stitch. Kid Heaven, S'mores, I love it. So we come to the end of the party and we had an amazing time. A lot of friends and family members came by and celebrated our ninth birthday with Thailand. It was an awesome experience, a lot of great food, a lot of great people, great conversations. So it was pretty awesome. We enjoyed our time. Um, we hope that you enjoyed it as well. We're going to be signing off and wrapping up the party and then getting ready for the adult uh, Halloween costume party uh, at a local bar. So we really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch us. Once again, uh, signing out uh, from Exodus to OMGs.